Wandering around memory lane is fantastic. Reliving the good old days, talking about our triumphs, our struggles. No one's interested. Don't bother going there. Welcome back to year six of the Cutting Edge Japan business show, which we release every Monday. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Cunney, award-winning franchise owner, master trainer, president of Dale Cunney Tokyo Training, and three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery. Zaegyo is the translation of Japan Sales Mastery. And not the more, Presen no Tachijin is the translation of Japan presentations, mastery. My latest books are Stop Wasting Money on Training. And the Japanese title for that one is Training de Okane o Mudni Suru wa Yamimashō. And my new book, Japan Leadership Mastery, which we will translate soon. We're bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaki in Minatoku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? We are here to win in business in Japan. We want to be at the forefront, the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. Now this is episode number 325. Your good old days stuff is dull. So let's get going. Gaining credibility as a speaker is obviously important. We often do this by telling our own experiences. However, having too much focus on us and away from the interests of the audience is a fine line we must tread carefully. When you get this wrong, a lot of valuable speaking time gets taken up and we face the danger of losing our audience. They are like lightning when it comes to escaping to the internet to go find things they feel are more relevant. We must always keep in the front of our mind that whenever we face our own audience, we are facing a room packed with critics and skeptics. We definitely have to establish our credibility or they will simply disregard what we are saying. The usual way to gain credibility is to draw on our experiences. A great way to do this is telling our war stories. The focus is usually on things that are important to us. So we certainly enjoy reliving the past. In fact, we can enjoy it a bit too much. We begin telling our life story because we are such an interesting person. We are certainly, everyone will want to hear it, won't they? Actually, their own life story is much more fascinating for them. So we should be trying to relate what we are talking about to their own experiences and their realities. We want to tell our stories we have to be committed to keeping them short and to the point. As soon as an audience gets a sense, the speaker is rambling down memory lane, they get distracted, bored, and mentally depart from the proceedings. I was listening to a senior company leader giving a talk, and he went on and on about how he started in sales and all his adventures. He was obviously enjoying it. But what did something like that happened 40 years ago in America have to do with the rest of us here in Tokyo. A good way to keep the audience engaged and focused on themselves is by asking rhetorical questions. These are questions which we don't require an actual answer, but the audience don't know that. This creates a bit of tension and they have to focus on the issue we have raised. The focus is now on the same points the speaker wants to emphasize. Because of the question, they have to mentally go there themselves. It is much more effective than having the speaker try and drag them there. Find out more when we come back from the break. If you want to become a fully competent and confident presenter, then do the High Impact Presentations course. We are all being judged when we speak, be it in the internal team meeting or in a public environment, be it the big bosses, clients, or an industry audience, everyone is evaluating us. Don't blow it. Get the best training on the planet. Do the high impact presentations course now in either Japanese or English. Speaking in public means our personal and professional brands are on show. Let's make it a total success. Japan Presentations Mastery is the Bible. 
presenting in Japan. This is the most comprehensive collection of experience and insight on presenting that you will ever need. Don't work it out by trial and error. Buy Japan Presentations Mastery and learn how to be confident, clear and persuasive. Buy Japan Presentations Mastery now. Welcome back. Rather than just telling war stories, we can ask them to compare the story we're going to tell with their own experiences. In this case, the speaker's example is just a prompt for them to identify with the situation being unveiled. This is better because they are relating the issue to their own reality. They can take the speaker's example and either agree or disagree with it. Even if they disagree with it, their different stance will be based on their own facts rather than opinion. We might say, I'm going to relate an incident which happened to me in a client meeting. Have any of you had this experience? And if so, what did you do? Listen to what I did and see if you think I made the best choice or not. We have now set up the comparison with their own world. This gets their attention in a natural way rather than me banging on about what a legend I was in the meeting with the client. Talking about ourselves is fun, but it's dangerous. How should we incorporate it? As we plan our talk, we have to work out the cadence of the delivery to include our war stories. If we are talking too much about ourselves, the audience may lose interest and escape from us. If we have designed it in such a way to involve them, we can keep them with us all the way to the end. This doesn't happen by itself. We have to carefully implant it when designing the talk. It's also very important to test this design during the rehearsal. Better to discover any issues in rehearsal than testing it, the content on a live audience. Sounds simple enough, but remarkably, 99% of speakers do no rehearsal at all. Doubt that statistic? How many speakers have you heard where you got the sense they had carefully rehearsed their talk? Case closed. In developing our attention-grabbing cadence during the talk, rather than waiting to Q&A to deal with any pushback on our opinions, we can go early. We can anticipate what those objections might be and handle them during the main body of our speech. We pose them as rhetorical questions. Some people in the audience, when they hear these objections, will be thinking, yeah, that's right. We then use our evidence drawn from our experiences, our war stories, to demolish that potential objection and ensure we maintain control of the issue. This technique also engages the audience more deeply in our presentation as they start to add perspectives they may not have thought of before. There's also a strong feeling of comprehensiveness about our talk too. It shows we are aware of different views, are not afraid of them and have an answer to remove them as a consideration. I hope you enjoyed today's show and so please subscribe on YouTube, share with your family, friends and colleagues become a regular. Hit the little bell icon to receive update notifications. Our website details are on screen now, www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. It's packed with value, so certainly check it out. We try to offer as much value as possible, so you might also enjoy our other shows. In fact, we are releasing content six days a week for podcasts Mondays for the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, Tuesday for the Presentations Japan series, and every second Tuesday for the Business of Tatsujin no Oshie Show, Wednesdays for the Sales Japan series, Thursdays for the Leadership Japan series, and every second Thursday for the Business Pro Podcast Show, Fridays for the Japan Business Mastery Show, and Saturdays for Japan's top business interviews. Now you get these wherever you get your podcasts. Also, every Monday, we release the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Television Show. And every Friday, the Japan Business Mastery Show. Saturdays, every Saturday, we are releasing Japan's top business interviews. These are all on YouTube. We appreciate your support and please let others know about it so they can benefit too. We want to make a contribution to helping people 
build their careers and businesses. And so please join with us in that endeavor. In episode 326, we are talking about when to say no to the buyer. So Yuroshiku, Onigai Tashimas, please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you. We've only got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up.